John chapter 4, as we, if we start to uh, look at verse 43, we're going we're gonna to start there. And, uh, but you know, verse 43 here says, after two days he left there for Galilee. Now, wh- where, was, where was he? So I'm, I'm going to ask them to put this map up there. If, if y'all, I, I may be asking, there you go. So this is a map of, of Galilee. Maybe I ought to wait the choir comes on down there. <laughs> so this is the map of Galilee. It's, uh, I'm going to ask her to zoom in in just a minute. But as, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving this other area, which last week, the last two weeks, they've been in, they've been in Samaria. Samaria is in the center of Galilee, and then there's Samaria, and then below that is Judah. That's... That's kind of how the country is laid out. So this is kind of a close-up. Um, now, we're going to be looking at, at a couple of different places. That, that blue there, that lake there, that's the Sea of Galilee. Uh, that's, uh, so there, there's a lot of time that's spent in, in here. Uh, there's a lot of, we've already been to Cana. This is, we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. And, uh, and Capernaum is really... That really the, the his base, Jesus and his disciples, that was their their base that we know of. But uh, I just wanted you to see this. There, there's we're going to be talking about uh, <clears throat> be talking about this area for quite some time. So we may hang on to that picture and put it back up there, so so you'll know. But to, this morning, as we look at John chapter four, we're going to be uh, looking at verse forty three through the end of this chapter. And uh, then next week we'll start with uh, we'll start with John chapter five. There's going to be something special about next week, just like it is this week. This week we find out that there's another miracle that Jesus does that John records. Now this is not the you know he he changed water into wine in Cana. This is not the next miracle that he performed. It's the next one that John records. Now this is kind of this was kind of tough to be able to to lay this out and, and be able to to preach preach this kind but at least I thought it was to begin with but as it turns out it's it's really when we go back to whatever that John is trying to prove his, he's laying this out kind of like a lawyer would lay out a case in a courtroom he's John is saying that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that if you believe in him you put your faith and trust in him you can be saved. He's the Messiah. He, he, you can be saved if you do this. That, that is all John is trying to do. So everything that John puts in there, all these miracles that he puts in there, he puts those in there for a particular reason. And that's what we have to do. We have to understand that this is why John picked certain things to be able to be in here. Now, I want us to be able to look at verse 43. I'm going to read down through uh, through verse 54. Verse 43, after two days, he left there for Galilee. Uh, Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. And when they, uh, when they entered Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him because they had seen everything that he did in Jerusalem during the festival, for they had also gone to the festival. If you remember, um, they, they, had, they were in Jerusalem during this festival. They, and as they started to travel north to get back to Galilee, they stopped somewhere for a couple of days. They stopped in, in Samaria, remember? The woman at the well. They stopped here. But everybody else that was traveling from Jerusalem to go back to Galilee, which way did they go? Did they go through Samaria? Probably not. <laughs> so they, but they got back to Galilee and everything that Jesus did in Jerusalem had already been reported to Galilee by the time he had gotten back. So by staying in, some, in Samaria, when, they, when the disciples left and started to go back up to Galilee, they already knew what was going on. And that's, that's, what, it, that's, what, they were, that's what John is saying here. He says, for they had also had gone to the festival. Jesus performed many miracles and many things in, in Jerusalem. Verse 46, 
when uh, he went again to Galilee or to Cana of Galilee. Y'all remember what where this was? This was where the wedding was. So he went to Cana where he had turned the water into wine, and there was a certain royal official whose name, uh, whose son was ill at Capernaum. Now, kind of getting this in, in mind, um, Cana is about 15 miles from, you know, from Capernaum. So just kind of getting, getting that, and, and it's not like they were jumping into, into cars and driving back and forth in, in just, you know, five or ten minutes. That's, that's not what... It, it took them a little while to be able to get. Now, they could walk it in a day, in less than a day. Um, Gina ran 14 miles yesterday. 14 miles. How long did it take you to run 14 miles? A little, a little over two hours. I can't beat that, Vic. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, they were, not even, they were not even running. It was about 14 miles back over from between these two, and, uh, and they were not running. So it would take them... It'd take them four or five hours, really, to get from one place to the next. So, so he comes, and his, and, he's, and his son, this is a royal official, and his son was ill in Capernaum. And when this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee, he went to him and pleaded with him uh, to come down and to heal his son since he was about to die. Jesus told him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Sir, the official said to him, come down before my boy dies. Go, Jesus told him, your son will live. That the man, the man then believed what Jesus said to him, and he departed. While he was still going down, his servants met him, saying that his boy was alive, and he asked them at what time he got better. Yesterday, at one in the afternoon. I love how he's how John is exact and everything. He says, Yesterday at one o'clock, the fever left him. And they answered, The father realized that this was the very hour which Jesus had told him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his household, or with his whole household. And now this was the second sign. Jesus performed after he came from Judea to Galilee. Now next week we're going to see we're going to see the third sign, the third miracle that that Jesus performs uh, next week. But this one is the second. So we, you know, that it's it's odd how how you know there you might go two or three chapters and and not see a miracle, and it's Jesus teaching, it's Jesus. Uh, uh, preaching and he's and he's doing different things and and talking to his disciples but then this week we're going to get to see this miracle and then next week we're going to get to see a, we're going to get to see another one which is awesome i'm excited about next week as well but this week i want us to be able to look at this and really if if you will hang on to one thing hang on to the title this morning the motivation behind your faith what so so i want to ask you this just the question what is the motivation behind your faith? What is the motivation behind your faith? Let's think about this guy just for a second. So I know you parents, y'all, if y'all have had sick kids and then you've had, you've had one like this, and then, you know, there, there's sometimes, some of you have lost children. Uh, and, and those are hard things to be able to, so you know by this guy being able to come to Jesus. He didn't even have time to talk about, <laughs> he didn't even talk about real faith, did he? I mean, all he was concerned about was what? His son. That was it. He didn't want to get into some deep theological question. And I mean, so, so he's, he's discussing this with this, with this man. Then the, the woman at the well, she got into this deep theological discussion with, with Jesus about this. So Jesus is trying to, or John is trying to tell us through what Jesus said in this section of Scripture about the motivation of your faith. Now, y'all help me just a little bit this morning. What was the motivation of faith for the Samaritans? Let's, let's just go back to the woman at the well. What was her motivation of faith? She got saved. Y'all believe she got saved? I truly believe she got saved. What was the motivation behind her faith? 
What was it? It was God saying, it was Jesus saying that I'm the Messiah. I have come. You put your faith and trust in me and you'll be saved. She then left. She went into town. She told the people about who Jesus was. This, could this be the Messiah? He, he told me everything about my life. And then, then, then what happened? All the people in town, they started going out to Jesus. And then when they got to Jesus, they, they told the woman, they said, you know, we don't, even have to, we don't even have to rely on your words anymore. We heard the words from Jesus himself that he is the Messiah. Now, I want to ask you this. Which person in Sychar did Jesus heal? What miracle did Jesus perform in Sychar? Last two weeks, this, this is where we were, in Sychar. It was in Samaria. Sychar is the city. So what, what miracle did Jesus perform? Anybody? <coughs> I don't remember one, do y'all? I don't remember a miracle that he, that he performed. Yet, yet, the people believed. Now he gets to Galilee, and his, his reputation has spread ahead of him, and he gets to Galilee, and they believe why. He tells, he tells this official the same thing. He says, unless I do signs, unless I do signs and wonders, he says, you people will not believe. So the, the Jews, they were requiring, they were requiring a sign or they were requiring Jesus to be able to do something spectacular, you know. Um, but so what's the motivation behind their faith? What's the motivation behind the Samaritan's faith? It was the word of God and then their, their faith. They put their faith and trust in Jesus. What's the motivation behind the faith of the Galileans or the Jews? There, there's, a little, there's, there's a little asterisk there tied to that, isn't it? You do something for me and I'll do something for you. Number one, I want us to be able to see that contrast. I just explained that basically. So number one, I want us to be able to see that contrast of faith because there is a contrast of faith. The contrast of the faith of the Samaritans and a contrast of the faith of the Galileans. Now we're going to unpack all this and then we're going to set it around. We're going to talk about this this morning and then we're going to gather it all back up and, and, and try to try to try to tie up all the loose ends. But this morning, I want you to think about the contrast between their faith. What was the deciding factor? Why was it that they believed? And, why, and, and is there an implication from Jesus that one is more genuine than the other? Is there? Is, so was the Samaritan's faith genuine? Overall. I mean, I know there are probably some that would... But overall, was the faith of the Samaritans genuine? Y'all say amen if it was. I, uh, all right, so was the faith of the Galileans or the Jewish or the Jews, was that genuine? Did I hear one amen? Who said that? Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that their faith is not genuine here. I'm not saying that at all. I am saying that there were probably some that their faith depended on what Jesus could do for me. What have you done for me lately? That kind of a, that's the attitude that, Je that's the attitude that when Jesus gets to, gets to Cana, he's already performed one miracle in Cana with the, what, you know, and, and, and no doubt this guy, this noble, this nobleman or this official worked for Herod, uh, he, he come to Jesus and he says, okay, I got this problem. I know, I know you, I mean, y'all can see this guy, right? Y'all can see this dad that is panicked. And he's come to Jesus and he said, I know you can do, I know you can do miracles. I need, my son's sick. And he said, I, I need you to come. And he said, go ahead, your, your, son's, your son's whole. 
But those are the two contrasts of faith that we see in verse 43 through 45. And I've already read that. So, so my question is this. What is the motivation of your faith? What is the motivation of your faith? I'm not telling you right now this morning that your faith is genuine or whether it's not genuine. You may not even have faith. You may say, I, I, I've never said I had faith, Brother Mike. I, I, I never said that. And, and I understand that too. But some of you, most of you have told me that you're saved. What is that based on? Or if you want to be saved, what is that based on? Do you, do you want to... So, so this is what was going on. This is the... I'll put this in, 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 uh, in, in Mount Hebron language so we'll understand this. The Jews were ready to cut a deal with Jesus. They'd get saved if he'd provide them something. Do y'all see that? Or is that just me? Do y'all see that? Amen? That's, that's what's going on here. So, what, what is it? What, what about your faith? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to ask this maybe periodically throughout this sermon. What, what is the motivation? What was the motivation behind your faith? I, I've, I've had people, I've sat in my office with people in this last year and even prior to this is that, well, I, I was saved when I was young. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if I really was saved or not. This has been going, this, listen, this has been going on before I was preaching. I've, I've been able to sit down and talk to people and they'd say this. And then I'd share the gospel with them and they, they'd say, well, I, I don't know if I'm saved. And then they'd turn around and they'd get saved. They, they, would, they would pray with me right then and they'd be saved. They'd, they'd, uh, and, and, they would, and they would, I said, well, you feel good about your salvation now? I absolutely do. Because, and and I, so what was the motivation behind what it was before? And listen, the, the stories range from, from everything and everywhere. But most kids that were brought up in school, well, I got saved during a VBS because my buddy did. Or I got saved because mama wanted me to. Or, or you know, it, it was kind of, it's kind of all over the place. Um, listen, and I'm not saying that kids can't get saved. I was saved when I was six. I know I was saved when I was six. But my question is to you, is what is the motivation behind your faith? Am I here this morning? I, I, don't, I don't know. Y'all are looking at me. Wayne, you're going to have to help me. You <laughs> You're not even helping me back there. I mean, it, well, he promised us <laughs> that faith. He did promise us. He said, I'll give each one of you a portion whereby you might be saved. Yep. If you trust. If you trust. And They did. That's right. That's right. So and that's by grace through faith that you're saved. I even made the note on what you just said up there. I just hadn't got to it, so I'm thanks for saying that. Now I don't have to. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. That's I kept asking and thank you. I, uh, listen. So the, and that's and that's my point. I was going to say that yeah, most of us come to Jesus with wanting something in return. Most of us come to Jesus wanting heaven in return. We want to be able to be saved. There's nothing wrong with that. But where Jesus is saying, now you guys are wanting me to jump through hoops for you to believe who I am. There's a different story altogether. So were, were some of those people saved? Absolutely. Were some of them lost? Absolutely. Did some of them have ulterior motives? Absolutely. Were some of them genuine? Absolutely. You know what? Is somebody sitting in here this morning genuine about wanting to be saved? Absolutely. Does somebody in here have an ulterior motive about their salvation? Possibly. possibly. Now, nobody, yeah, nobody wants to go to hell. That's, that's the thing about it is, is that's, that's where we are. But we, we will, we will, if our faith is not based on who Jesus Christ is. 
Number two, the validation of faith. Number one, the con uh, contrast of faith. Number two, the validation of faith. He, he went again to Cana of Galilee where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son was ill at Capernaum when this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee. He went to him and pleaded with him, come down and heal his son. Since he was about to die, Jesus told him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now, Jesus goes ahead and he heals. He does miracles. Why does he do that? Be because he wants people to believe. But there is that contrast from the Samaritans that just simply believed on Jesus Christ just simply because he said he was and they believed it. Amen. Amen? That's where we're supposed to be. We shouldn't put, we shouldn't put a, 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 we shouldn't cut a deal with God to be saved. It's all about what he's done. We put our faith and trust in him and we can be saved. Now this is all, this is all about this, this little boy that's sick this morning. <laughs> we hadn't got to that part. So let's, let's, let's get to this. Um, but before I move off from that, Vic, <laughs> I, I put, I, I listed that. A lot of people that following, or think following Christ is a consumer mentality, okay? Believe in him as long as we get what we want. Right? I mean, that, that, that happens a lot in our, I'll believe him as long as I get that job. I'll believe in him as long as, as long as, as I, you know, as, I, as long as I'm made whole, as long as I, my sickness is cured, I'll believe in him as long as, as long as this will happen down, you know, as long, I don't know, what, whatever the reason, I'll believe in him as long as, as long as this happened. And, and I, I love this, um, John chapter 20, verse 29, they, they're in the upper room, and you've got your doubting Thomas, these are disciples. And, and he tells these disciples in verse 29, Jesus tells them, because you have seen me, you have believed. But Jesus said, blessed are the ones or those who have not seen and yet believe. You know who that is? That's me. <laughs> that's you. That's, if, you. if you're a believer in Jesus Christ here this morning, that's you. Because you have believed, yet you have not seen. You know who you are? You're the Samaritan. If you believe fully in Jesus Christ and who he said he was. That's the whole book of John. That's the whole Bible. Did you know that? Everything even in the Old Testament points to Jesus Christ that's coming. Amen. Salvation is not a dog and pony show. That's not what this is. We don't get to tell Jesus that we will believe if you'll do this or that. We're to believe that he is God in the flesh, that he came to give his life and sacrifice for us. He was resurrected on the third day. And Paul said that our faith, that is, and that is salvation, and it's not a bargain. We don't bargain for salvation. I want to mention three reasons why this morning before I move on. Because we're all dead in our sin. We, we don't have any. You, you know why you can't bargain for salvation? Because you don't have anything to bargain with. Okay? You're all dead in sin. I was dead in sin. The next is we have no leverage. <laughs> we're, we have no leverage because we're dead in sin. We can't offer God anything. And the last one. Only God should get the glory for your salvation. Amen. That is it. Because if there was something that I, I could do to be able to gain my salvation, I would get the glory for it. God only gets the glory for it. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. This is, Paul, Paul is, is explaining the gospel. It's as clear as it gets. For I passed on to you, as most important, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, and he was raised on the third day 
according to the Scriptures. Listen, that's as clear of a gospel presentation that you can get. Number three. We're probably going to camp out here for just a little bit. So y'all dig in. Don't go to sleep on me. Number three, the results of faith. There was a result of faith. Now, when this guy, when this guy came, this nobleman, when he came to Jesus, and he believed that Jesus could heal him, heal his son, didn't he? He absolutely believed that Jesus could heal his son. You know why? Because he didn't want to talk about anything else. Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus said, unless y'all, unless I, unless I do some miracle, y'all are not going to believe. And this, this poor guy, this poor dad says, let's get back to my son. That's what he was saying. Let's get back to my son that's sick, that's dying. I need you to go and heal him. But after that happened and he was healed, we see that dad gets saved, doesn't he? And we also see something about his whole household gets saved. Did you know that 93% of families where dad gets saved and is active in church, 93% of the time the family will be saved too? Did y'all know that? That is unbelievable. Dads, here this morning, that puts a lot of pressure on you, don't it? I mean, it really does. It really does. Verse 49, sir, the official said to him, come down before my boy dies. Go, Jesus told him, your son will live. And the man believed what, he, what Jesus said to him, and he departed. Was he saved then? Not yet. He asked them at what time he got better. He, he met these people that were coming. He didn't even go. But he met this bunch that was coming from home. And he says, what time was it? He said, yesterday, about one afternoon, the fever left him. In verse 53, the father realized this was the very hour at which Jesus told him, your son will live. So he, he himself believed along with his whole household. Believed what? Believed that his son was healed? Absolutely not. This guy's a, this guy's a Christian at this point. That's not what they call him at this point. He was a believer. He believed who Jesus said he was. It went, it went beyond surface faith at that point. You know, he had surface faith at the beginning. He kind of he understood and he kind of knew who Jesus was. He kind of knew that he had some power. Verse 53, the father realized that this, this was the very hour. He said, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Why did the official believe? The father, after seeing the results of his faith, believed in Jesus, and not only in uh, him, but his whole household. He testified to his family that Jesus made it possible. Then, genuine faith came. Now, that was hard sometimes for us to be able to hard for us to be able to follow Jesus maybe there were a lot of people that followed Jesus because he gave them something did you know that I, I want us to be able, I'm going to end with this John chapter 6 I'm going to end with this it's going to be a long ending <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say <laughs> we're not going to be here a long time but it's going to be you know, don't you just hate preachers that are not, maybe you're not supposed to hate them, but don't you really dislike preachers that say, and in conclusion, and then, you know, his sermon goes on another 45 minutes. <laughs> it won't be that bad. I, I, it won't be. Listen, John, uh, let me get over there too. So I want to, I want to, I want to just call out a couple of, of things. Now, just kind of a little bit of background here. So Jesus had just fed the 5,000 with fish and bread. You remember this? <laughs> Y'all remember this. Jesus, and it was more than 5,000. It's probably more like 20,000 people out here in the middle of nowhere. And Jesus feeds 
these 5,000 with just a couple of fish and a couple of loaves of bread. It's, it's an amazing, we're going to get to that. I'm excited about getting to this too. But, but they, they do this. But guess what happens with these people? They keep following Jesus. Do you know why they keep following Jesus? Have you ever, <laughs> you ever had somebody drop off an animal at your house? A cat or a dog? How many of you will go and pick them up? Even, Sherry, raise your hand. <laughs> you just feel sorry for them. But, but you know what? You start to feed them, and you know what they do? They stay, don't they? They stay. And yeah, Jerry said more of them show up. <laughs> That's what, they go tell everybody else, don't they? It's, Jerry's feeding us down there. Uh, so, but this is what was going on. They followed Jesus because they could get something from him. That's why they followed Jesus. It wasn't anything else. You know how I know? Because we're going to look at this today. We're going to see about the results of their faith. But I, I want us to be able to look at John chapter 6. I don't think they're going to have this on the screen. <laughs> I know they're trying to panic up there right now, and they're going, you didn't give us this. Uh, so y'all go ahead and turn to John chapter 6. Is everybody there? Say amen when you get, when you get there so I know everybody's there. John chapter 6. Verse 40 says this. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life, and I will raise Him up in the last day. This is a very important verse of Scripture. This is a very, these are very important words from Jesus. You know why? Because He says, anybody that believes in me, I will save them. That's, that's what He's saying right there. But then they go on, and they're having this discussion, and there's thousands, th listen, thousands of people Jesus tried to get away from them. He went on the other side of the uh, Galilean Sea, and they followed him around there. And he's trying to get, and, they, and he can't get away from them. And, and, and all they're doing is just like a, a cat or a dog. They just, they're wanting to eat. I mean, you gave us food yesterday. We want food today. That's simply why they were following him, most of them. Verse 54, go over before I read this, I want to kind of preface this. So Jesus is about to say something in hyperbole or, or a, a, a really a, a symbolism, uh, and, and, they're going, and they're going to kind of back up and go, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> They've been following Jesus so he would feed them. And they, they're going to say, they're going to back up and they're going to say, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what we've got ourselves into here. <laughs> That's probably what they're looking around at their family saying this. But verse 54, Jesus says, The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Okay? Y'all need me to read that again? Does everybody understand what Jesus is saying there in verse 54? Verse 60, going down to 60, I don't have time to read all this. But he's telling them that he is the bread of life, okay? Now, we understand what that means, the bread of life. He's talking about spiritual, uh, he's talking about spiritual things here, again. But he's using something physical so they'll be able to understand it. Verse 60 says this, after he said what I just read. Verse 60 says, therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said to him, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? I guarantee you somebody said, this is tough. Huh? You're going to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and if you do that, you'll be part of me. <laughs> and everybody's standing there going, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you ever seen that Homer Simpson video thing where he backs up in the bushes? Y'all, um, yeah, y'all seen that. Okay, so that's what was going on here. These, these people here, they start backing up. And verse 61 says, Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were complaining about this, Complaining about what? About what he just said. He said, knowing in himself that his disciples were complaining about this, ask them, does this offend you? <laughs> listen, listen to that. Jesus just says, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then, and then he says, does that offend you? Y yeah, <laughs> it would. Verse 62, then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Where was he before? Heaven. 
Verse 63, I wish we could unpack 63, but the Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. And what he's telling them there, he says that your salvation is going to be based on God the Father giving you the Holy Spirit and the ability to be able to be saved. Jesus was there to be able to die on the cross and be the Messiah and, and be resurrected. The Holy Spirit is coming and you're going to be able to be saved through the Holy, by the work of the Holy Spirit. All this is going to work together. That, again, I wish I had time to break all that down maybe soon, but maybe when we get here. But there are some of you who don't believe. So Jesus knew that there were some that didn't believe him. The rest of that verse says, For Jesus knew from the beginning of those who did not believe the one who, that would betray him. He's talking about Judas there. Verse 65, he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted to him by the Father. That goes back to being able to have the Holy Spirit to be able to be saved. Again, I wish I could unpack that. But verse 66, from that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. So Jesus said to the 12, you don't want to go away too, do you? And this is, this is the most important thing here. Simon P Peter says, where are we going to go? Let's read that verse. Verse 68, Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Now, now did Peter just hear him say what he said earlier? He did. Did Peter know that there was a reason that he said that? He did. What happened to all these people that said, this is a hard saying? They left. Surface faith. Why were they following Jesus? Because he would give them something. Well, what, what's the difference, Brother Mike? It's, sur it's surface faith, genuine faith. Now, the old boy, the nobleman, he had surface faith. He believed who Jesus was. He believed that he could heal his son. That's surface faith. But what did Jesus say about surface faith? Because that's really what matters, right? It's what the Bible says. Can or will surface faith lead to genuine faith? Will you answer that? Can surface faith lead to genuine faith? Yes, it can. Could it lead not to salvation, genuine salvation? Yes, it might be. It, you, you may only ever have surface faith, but is that enough to be able to save you? Hmm. What does Jesus say about it? I promise you we're, we're in it here. <laughs> okay, Matthew, and I think they do have this, Matthew 13. 18 through 22. This is the parable of the soul. You know, he said Jesus was given, given the, this, this, uh, this teaching moment, uh, and, and he says, so listen to the parable of the sower. Verse 18. And when anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, and this is the, this is the one sown along the path. This is, Jesus said, you take the seed and you sow it along the path. And he says, it, it doesn't even start any growth. In verse 20, and the one sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. But he has no root and is short-lived. And when distress and persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now when one sown among the thorns, now the one sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on the ground, on the good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word. Y'all read that with me, that last part for sure. Who does produce fruit and yields some hundred and some 60 and some 30 times of what was sown. What was genuine faith? What does Jesus say that genuine faith 
It, it goes beyond surface faith. And be, believe, I believe that Jesus exists. That's as good as you're going to get from me, Brother Mike. I believe that. You know what? It's not genuine faith. Genuine faith. Jesus tells us that genuine faith is from the heart. Gen surface faith, it'll get you up here. And I've heard people say that many people go to hell because of 12 inches. You know what that means? It means they had faith up here, but they didn't have faith down here. What's your faith in? What is the motivation of your faith this morning? Is your faith genuine, heartfelt faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you put every bit of your faith and trust in Him? If you've never done that this morning, I beg you to come and give your heart to Christ. Now you can come this morning. We're going to have time, response time, invitation. They're going to come and they're going to sing a verse. You can come for any reason this morning if you'd like to be able to come. And you may want to come pray for this church. You may want to come pray for your family. You may have family that's not saved. Next week is 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 our spring jubilee. We're inviting people who who are not normally going to church anywhere to come and be part of us next week. You may want to pray for them. Pray for the one that you have really thought about inviting to church. And if there is not anybody that you've thought about inviting to church, come pray about that person. Come pray for somebody. Invite somebody to come. Be part of us. Would you stand this morning?